We have several areas out here in the tropics today, one right over the state of Florida and another one well off towards the east. Now, this one over Florida, I know when you first look at it, you go, oh, hold the phone. What's going on? This is worrisome. And I've even seen on social media as people are not even indicating the fact that it's only a 10% chance of development. And it, it is causing some a little bit of panic. So let's break this down and talk about it. And that's my whole goal with these updates when I sit here and talk to you. It's being transparent and kind of explaining what's happening. So first off, yeah, we have this kind of broad low located just over the Bahamas. But the, the big problem is it's interacting with a high pressure ridge towards the north. That's all these clear skies. So you get that interaction, you get that onshore flow. This is causing a bit of coastal flooding. In fact, I've been seeing images out of Flagler Beach area where the waters are being backed up in the intracoastal and it's going in even into some yards near some homes. And even along the St. John's River closer to Jacksville, the water levels are being rose up due to this consistent onshore flow causing a bit of a bottleneck. So every high tide, the tide tries to go out and it hits up against that onshore flow. Meanwhile, we also have another area out towards the east. I'll come back to this one in just a second. Tropical wave coming off the west coast of Africa. Africa. So taking a look at the ECMWF guidance, and this is just that gradient induced wind. So coastal showers are going to continue on and off throughout the day on Friday, Saturday, and into Sunday. And you can even see with the ECMWF, you kind of have this little low trying. You see it kind of blips on and off here for South Florida. That's this low chance of tropical development. Not a hurricane by any means, not even in the faintest, but it is a little bit of a low interacting with this powerful high towards north, and that interaction creates a pressure gradient wind. All wind is pressure gradient. Well, all synoptic scale wind at least. So the big thing is just that interaction, and that's why those winds are so high up and down the east coast here. So take a look at this. This is actually the forecast for the Jacksonville area. Kind of give you an idea of that breeze. You got winds 30 to 40 miles per hour here on Friday, Saturday, over towards a Sunday, and even into Monday as well. But due to that interaction and the jet streams dip down, this actually creates a lot of wind shear throughout the atmosphere. And wind shear is not good for a tropical system trying to organize up. It does let off a bit by Monday into Tuesday, which could elude to something trying to develop into the Gulf, but at least for the time being, there's just way too much cheer in the area to disrupt this and not allow it to organize. But with that said, we're still looking at some pretty decent rain totals coming in off of it. That easterly flow here up and down the east coast of Florida and also over towards the Gulf Coast off towards the west. All right, so that is a 10% chance. If anything changes, of course, we'll keep you posted here at First Coast News. Meanwhile, that other tropical wave I mentioned back towards the east, if I was going to be monitoring a tropical wave and I had to pick one, this is, would be the one I would pick for development. Um, basically, you can see here with the GFS and Euro, look just right in there. We have both of them trying to indicate an area of low pressure, but neither is full on. Even the Google DeepMind, which is a model that has been doing really well recently, it's an AI model, um, indicates a storm, but it also indicates a recurve scenario. Jerry would be the next name on the list if it did develop up. And by the way, speaking of named storms, this is what's left of Imelda racing off towards the north and east right here. It is extra tropical at this time. Definitely good riddance on this one. The forecast for the storm was tricky at this time last week, to say the least. And um, just a clear indicator of all the dynamics in the meteorological world, including something like the Fujiwara effect we always monitor. All right. Anyways, I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta. If you have any questions or anything like that, shoot me a message on uh, Facebook, Twitter, rspetta at Tegna or firstcoastnews.com, and uh, I'll try my best to get back to you. As always, though, stay safe out there.